Good afternoon. I'm Ross Ng. I'm a PhD student at the Academic Unit of Social Contacts and Policies of Education at the University of Hong Kong. I'm so sorry that I cannot attend the conference in person, but I hope that you will enjoy my presentation on a corpus-based study of relative clauses in written Hong Kong English. If you would like to know more about me, you may scan the QR code shown on the screen, which is a link to my personal profile. The entire presentation will be divided into four parts. Having provided you with some background information, I'm going to outline the methodology of the study, followed by um, its key findings as well as implications. Now, let's start with some theoretical background. Different second language learning theories explain the difficulty in second language development of English relative clauses from different perspectives. The behaviorist approach and the generative approach attribute second language learners' difficulty in the development of English relative clauses to cross-linguistic influences and their failure to reset the parameter of WH feature in universal grammar in the course of second language learning, respectively. The input-based emergence approach believes that relative clauses with more frequent and salient occurrence in input would be acquired or developed by learners more easily, while the functional approach believes that relative clauses with clearer communicative functions are developed more easily by learners. On the basis of different second language learning theories, three hypotheses have been put forward to explain second language development of English relative clauses. The non-phrase accessibility hierarchy argues that synthetic roles higher in the hierarchy are more accessible to be relativized when compared to those lower in the hierarchy. So relative clauses with relativized elements higher in the hierarchy are developed by learners earlier when compared to those with relativized elements lower in the hierarchy. The perceptual difficulty hypothesis argues that relative clauses involving center embedding are perceptually more difficult for learners to process and therefore developed later by learners when compared to those involving right embedding. The subject-object hierarchy hypothesis draws upon the concept of processing discontinuity created by facial boundaries and center embedding to explain second language development of English relative clauses. The number of processing discontinuity is argued to be directly proportional to the processing difficulty. Izumi attempted to conduct an experimental study involving sentence combination, interpretation, and grammaticality judgment tasks to test the three hypotheses. The non-phrase accessibility hierarchy and subject-object hierarchy hypothesis were discovered to be partially supported, while the perceptual difficulty hypothesis was found to be fully supported. However, this study only tested certain types of relative clauses in English, and it failed to take into consideration learners' natural production data. Cantonese English learners' development or production of English relative clauses is actually very much influenced or impacted by Cantonese relative clauses, which are actually typographically different from English relative clauses by being pre-nominal derived from topicalization and containing resumptive pronouns. From a bilingual perspective, on the basis of data in Hong Kong bilingual child language corpus, Yip and Matthews summarized five stages of Cantonese English learners' development of English relative clauses. Learners first produce pre-nominal relative clauses and subsequently achieve or reach a transitional stage between pre-nominal and post-nominal relative clauses until they can eventually produce target-like post-nominal relative clauses without resumptive pronouns. From a social linguistics perspective, Gisborn conducted a corpus-based study on relative clauses in Hong Kong English, and six morphosyntactic attributes were identified by Gisborn. However, this study was conducted on the basis of an incomplete corpus of Hong Kong English, and it was purely qualitative in nature. The present study aims at filling the gap in both bilingual and sociolinguistic research on relative clauses in 
Hong Kong English by verifying the predictions of the three hypotheses with data of Hong Kong English and following up the investigation into the attributes of relative clauses in Hong Kong English with a complete corpus. In particular, there are two major research questions which are related to the bilingual aspect and the sociolinguistic aspect respectively. Data were collected from the written part of the Hong Kong and Great Britain components of the International Corpus of English, which is described as an unparalleled resource for comparative studies of different varieties of the English language. In the study, WH relatives and Z relatives were identified by means of concordant search for relative words and the subordinated that in the corpus. After coding and frequency count, the frequencies of occurrence of different types of relative clauses in Hong Kong English were compared to one another, followed by a comparison of frequencies of occurrence of different types of relative clauses in Hong Kong English and British English. Finally, features of non-standard relative clauses in Hong Kong English and British English were identified for a qualitative comparison between the relative clauses in the two varieties. Now, let's look at the findings of the study. In response to the first research question, the noun phrase accessibility hierarchy was discovered to be partially supported by data of written Hong Kong English. The frequencies of occurrence of different types of relative clauses are generally are, are, are generally consistent with the noun phrase accessibility hierarchy, except for a higher frequency of occurrence of relative clauses with relativized prepositional complement, which is lower in the hierarchy than those with relativized object, which is higher in the hierarchy. In fact, this phenomenon is also observed in British English. And one explanation is that frequency of occurrence is not only affected by language users' level of development of the language structures, but also other discourse-related factors. The perceptual difficulty hypothesis was found to be fully supported by data of Hong Kong English, with a higher frequency of occurrence of relative clauses involving right embedding. As both Cantonese and English are SVO languages, Cantonese learners of English may easily transfer their sentence interpretation strategies from Cantonese to English when interpreting relative clauses, and therefore they interpret and process relative clauses involving right embedding more easily. The subject-object hierarchy hypothesis was discovered to be partially supported by data of written Hong Kong English. This table presents the number of processing discontinuities as well as the frequency of occurrence of different types of relative clauses in Hong Kong English. In general, um, there's a higher frequency of occurrence of relative clauses with fewer processing discontinuities. And it also appeared that processing discontinuity created by phasal boundary created more processing difficulty to learners when compared to processing discontinuity created by center embedding. In the sense that a type of relative clause with a certain number of processing discontinuity created by phasal boundaries occurred less frequently than another type of relative clause with the same number of processing discontinuity created by center embedding. In response to the second research question, relative clauses in both Hong Kong English and British English were compared to each other quantitatively. It was discovered that relative clauses occurred more frequently in British English than in Hong Kong English, which could be related to language users' higher level of language development of relative clauses. More specifically, relative clauses with relativized prepositional complements were found to occur more frequently in British English than in Hong Kong English, which could be related to um, Cantonese learners of English um, possessing more difficulty in mastering the usage of prepositions. And therefore, they may tend to avoid the usage of res, um, relative clauses with relativized prepositional complements. In contrast, relative clauses with subjects as antecedents were discovered to occur more frequently in Hong Kong English than in British English. In fact, this structure is commonly observed in English language textbooks in Hong Kong, 
So more frequent input may actually result in more frequent use of the structure in language production. Finally, relative clauses with relativized subject complements were totally absent in Hong Kong English. And this is a rather complex structure syntactically, and so learners may not master the structure. Um, relative clauses in Hong Kong English and British English were also compared qualitatively. The method of comparison was the identification of relative clauses whose syntactic structures deviated from the grammatical descriptions in descriptive grammar. And the features of non-standard relative clauses were put into three categories. The first category includes language features of non-standard relative clauses observed only in Hong Kong English. It contains four features, including missing propositions in complex relative phrases, which could be related to learners' difficulty in mastering the usage of prepositions, missing main verbs in relative clauses, which could be related to learners' confusion between relative clauses and post-positive adjective phrases, participial clauses with relative markers, which could be related to learners' confusion between relative clauses and participial clauses, and missing subjects in relative clauses, which could be related to Cantonese as a pro-drop language. The second category contains features of non-standard relative clauses more common in Hong Kong English than in British English. There are four features in this category, including a misuse of that relatives as supplementary relative clauses, subject operator disagreement, which is universally observed in different language structures produced by Cantonese learners of English, resumptive pronouns, which could likely be um, related to cross-linguistic influence, and redundant prepositions in relative phrases, which is another feature related to the use of prepositions. The third category involves features of non-standard relative clauses equally common in Hong Kong English and British English. There are seven features in this category, including unclear distinction between integrated and supplementary relative clauses, especially related to the use of punctuation marks, use of where or when with abstract antecedents, which is related to the peripheral conceptualization of time and space, misplacement of relative clauses at the end of a sentence instead of immediately following the antecedent, misuse of relative words, which is related to the semantics, use of relative clauses in inappropriate contexts, expressing communicative functions other than restricting denotation or providing extra information, misuse of prepositions in complex relative phrases, and use of relative clauses as independent clauses instead of subordinate clauses. In conclusion, from a bilingual perspective, the perceptual difficulty hypothesis was partially supported by data of written Hong Kong English, while the non-phrase accessibility hierarchy and subject-object hierarchy hypothesis were partially supported. The perceptual difficulty hypothesis was fully supported. From a social linguistic perspective, both quantitative and qualitative differences were found between relative clauses in Hong Kong English and British English. So what are the pedagogical implications? as the perceptual difficulty hypothesis is fully supported by data of Hong Kong English, it could actually inform the instructional order of relative clauses in Hong Kong. And curriculum developers ought to take into consideration learners' actual language use, whether the different types of relative clauses are frequently or rarely used by learners when designing the curriculum. They should not treat deviations or non-standard relative clauses necessarily as errors. On the contrary, features of Hong Kong English ought to be incorporated into the curriculum. Corpus linguistics as a research methodology has some limitations. Firstly, it fails to provide any negative evidence as to what learners fail to master. Secondly, frequency of occurrence does not necessarily imply or suggest the level of language developments of learner. Finally, a large common size is necessary for more valid data. It is a pity that I cannot take any questions in person, but if you have any questions regarding my presentation, you may feel free to email me and I would be welcome and I would be glad to receive or take any of your questions. 
Thank you very much for listening to my presentation.